Well, Judy, thanks for joining me today. Uh, I think this will be fun. I really just wanted to sit down and get to know you a little bit and uh, probably ask you some really tough questions. Thank you. I appreciate that. Good. Thanks for the invite. Awesome. Well, let's get, uh, let's get affiliated. I love it. Okay. Next question. This one's really hard. Mm. What is the best time of year to visit Wisconsin? <laughs> <laughs> Can I start with not the best time? You don't want to go there in January. I don't know. It's beautiful that time of year. I think uh, this time of year uh, in the summer is so fabulous. Like uh, everything's green. It's beautiful. I mean, you know, you've you, you spent a lot of time there in your life. Uh, it is just one of my favorite places on earth this time of year. It's tough to beat. And it is green. Yeah, it is. Uh, now, once again, you get into January, February. Yeah, I think you're better <laughs> off in California. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, last hard hitting question for you here. Okay, this is this is a softball. How long have you been in real estate? 32 years. All right, let me add on to that. Where did you start in real estate? San Diego. Okay, with which company? Century 21. <laughs> 32 years I, ago. I started Century 21. When I said I know where all the bodies are buried, I started with Century 21 Cloud and Furness, which changed to Century 21 Able, which changed to Century 21 Award, and now Century 21 Affiliate. So technically, I've been with the same company all this time. <laughs> just four different names on the door. I That's just all. inherited new people. <laughs> well, we love you. I'm glad that we Thank inherited you. you or vice versa. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So Judy, I, you know, you and I have known each other a little bit, but yep. I, don't, I don't know your full story. So if it's all right with you, I, I'm going to grill you a little bit on your background. Okay, uh, fair I enough. know you have some Midwest roots. Yes. So where were you born in? Uh, born in West Bend, okay. which is, if, for those that are unfamiliar with the Wisconsin area, it's uh, about 30 miles north of Milwaukee. Yeah, okay. Born and raised there. <clears throat> Moved here when I was 26. Okay. And I've been here ever since. Um, I had a pet store back there. Oh, really? I moved here and I got into the import export business of parrots. Really? Get out of here. Yeah, so it gives you a good background for real estate. <laughs> uh, so then uh, when they stopped importing parrots, I had to find an occupation. And real estate is where I landed. That is wild. I have so many questions that we probably don't have time for this interview on, on that background. Uh, family is still back in the Midwest? You ever get back there? My family is back there. My husband's family is back there. We're actually leaving and we're going there in a week and a half. Oh, fantastic. Look, you got into it. You're in a whole nother climate in Southern California. Uh, get into the real estate industry. Just walk me through like what was life when you got into that industry and what was it like then? So real estate at the time that I got into it was, very, was a down market. Yeah, I mean, okay. a very down market. And the gal that I trained with knew vacant land. So mm -hmm. I cut my teeth on vacant land and property way out that nobody else wanted to do. So that's how I learned real estate. And what, what geographic territory were you kind of selling in at that time? Uh, Potrero, uh, Delzura, Campo, okay. way out, yeah. way out. Got it. Um, and then vacant land, which nobody knows how to sell vacant land or even look it up anymore because it's kind of like a lost art. You know, I mean, you've been a top performer for years in the industry. Um, how, what was that transition like? How did you get to that point? Because I think that's a, a piece a lot of our agents are always asking the question of, okay, how do I go from just getting my license to to actually become, becoming a top performer? So when I got the questions uh, last night, I thought about that. And yeah. probably the biggest aha or the biggest word of advice I can give anybody that's starting in real estate, hire a coach, mm. have somebody hold you accountable, and go to work. Yeah. I mean, it, it, that's all I've done. I haven't done anything differently than anybody else. I go to work every day. Um, you can show up here at 8.30 in the morning. I am here. You show up here at 7.30, I'm here. Mm -hmm. Every day, Monday through Friday. Yeah. And I'm here every day. Yeah. Um, and then I have a coach that I talk to every Still week. Still today, this, your coach? Still okay. today. I, I have had a coach now for over 20 years. And I'm coached every week. I belong to a mastermind group. And I also have accountability. Yeah. So all of those things, when you work in real estate, the, the, the fallacy is, is that you're your own boss. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, it's like people don't go to work. Yeah. And so then they fail and they go, oh, I tried real estate and it didn't work. Well, you didn't work. Yeah. So go to work. It's a real job. And I've always treated it as, an, as a real job. I think it's a really great advice. And I can't tell you how many of our top producers mm -hmm. that I talk to in very similar stories, right? I, I think people overcomplicate our business sometime and mm -hmm. we just get down to the basics. Like you said, accountability, um, some self-discipline, um, yeah. you know, working your schedule, those kind of things right. all add up to success. 
So Dan, I've got a couple questions for you. So I hogged all the questions earlier, <laughs> so I apologize. Yes, please no ask problem. away. So what do you see the difference between Wisconsin market and California market to be? Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a really good question and one that I get all the time. Um, Honestly, I feel like our different marketplaces and, and most markets in the US aren't that different from each other, right? right. I, I'm a big believer, people are people. Uh, how we work a transaction, maybe there's different nuances in Southern California than let's say Wisconsin, but the transaction itself isn't all that different. Mm -hmm. um, I would say the biggest differences out here is uh, one, your average sale price is, is pretty significantly larger, right? Um, so you're dealing with bigger transactions. I think there's a little more complexity to the marketplace out here when you're dealing with forms, legalities, uh, the process from like accepted offer to close. You've got a, a little few more steps that take place out in mm -hmm. Southern California. Um, but you know, from how buyer activity is taking place, the demand, the lack of inventory, all those same factors we've been talking about for you know 10 months out here, the exact same storylines back in the Midwest. So I don't think it's all that different. I just think scale and complexity is a little bigger out here than we see kind of back in the Midwest. So how many of your agents want to move out here and buy a house from me? Once again, uh, <laughs> in January and February, everybody wants to move out here. Uh, you know, it, one of the reasons that we uh, did this and decided to expand out to the West Coast, um, not only was we thought it was a big opportunity, really great marketplace, great people that we got to do business with, um, but we thought there actually is some really interesting synergies between the Midwest and Southern California, just from a referral basis, from a retirement standpoint. I mean, we get people all the time that are retiring back in the Midwest, and they tend to either gravitate down to Arizona of Florida mm -hmm. or to the Southern California area. So we feel like it's a really good referral network back and forth. I think there's also a lot of investment opportunities that people maybe in Southern California see back in the Midwest. Hey, I can buy a four unit for $500,000 back in the Midwest. Good rents. Why wouldn't I invest in that? So to me, there's, there's a lot of synergies that make this uh, kind of special and, and work out really well that way. So Dan, explain to me what your role is in the company. What I actually do. What you actually do. Yeah, not much. <laughs> uh, so I am our, uh, by title, uh, CEO and owner. Um, I probably spend uh, half of my time kind of back in the Midwest, our corporate headquarters based in mm -hmm. uh, Madison, Wisconsin, uh, and I probably spend half my time traveling. And that is coming out to Southern California, visiting our other offices in the Midwest, um, kind of making sure that uh, we're doing the right things to support the agents and the managers and team leaders out there in the field. Um, a big piece of my role kind of as it's developed over the years has really been making sure um, I can bring the vision to the company. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, where do we want to go? Where the evolution of the company is going? Um, how do we start then putting the, the puzzle pieces together to get there? We've mm -hmm. got such a phenomenal staff that supports the organization. We've got great people on the operations side kind of making that vision come to life. We got great people supporting the agents on the field. Um, we've got great people working on the recruiting and growth side of it. Um, and to me, it was always trying to make sure we could push the company to the next level. And it sounds like it's growth. Your, your, your part is the growth part. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, I've, I've said this before, and it gets a little bit into the philosophy of the company. I'm a big believer that. Uh, organizations in the real estate world right now either have to be very niche, very small, and handle very small particular you know niche, or they have to be big enough to provide the right tools and right. systems and service. And for me, that was the vision uh, and the traction we kind of went down of, okay, well, how do we scale? How do we provide uh, the right services so our agents can right. go out there and provide the right services to their clients and customers? So to me, that's been our model and one of the big vision pieces I've constantly worked towards and, and growth and, and having the company move to the next level is, is always a big part of uh, it. I want to get a little hyper local for a second. Okay. Uh, seeing the fact I don't live here and uh, I get to be out here every so often, tell me some great things about the community that you service. And for me, as an outsider, I guess, uh, tell me like, what's something fun to do? Give, give, me a, give me the lay of the land. So when we have friends and family that come out, yep. the very first thing we do is we take them to the Hotel Dell mm -hmm. because that is like iconic. Been there, fantastic Walk place. the beach, yeah. have lunch there, have a couple cocktails and just, you know, walk down by the Navy SEALs. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it, it's pristine, I love it. I go to the San Diego Zoo. I mean, there's- I've never been, I gotta take my kids, I hear it's fantastic. I went, I went to Africa and the only thing better than going to the San Diego Zoo is to go to Africa. And so that you were dead San better. Diego Zoo, okay. Wild Animal Park, because okay. that's just an offshoot of the zoo, but better, it's more like Africa. Okay. Um, those, are, those are the hot spots okay. um, that I would go to 
to or get on the trolley not not the trolley going back but there's a yeah. trolley tour yep. that takes you all around old town yeah so those for me are like the highlights that you have okay. to go see i gotta go out to dinner somewhere where am i going <sighs> cowboy star mm, okay haven't been there yet all right star. Uh, check it out really really good steak. I mean, as good as it is in the Midwest. All right, okay, I'm in, I'll check yeah. it out. Yep. Love it. Uh, what are you seeing uh, as changes taking place right now out here as we, we came in and the, the change of ownership took place? I like the changes that I've seen. Um, they, they have been very subtle, but impactful for me. Uh, if I send an email out, it's instant. I, yeah. But I do know that if I send it after three o'clock, <laughs> I'm not going to get an answer. We got to we, uh, we we keep working on the West Coast. I'll get, but I'll get an answer by 6, 30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, and it's very quick. I mean, I've been used to, in the past, having a week or two or three weeks. And that, for me, is it, like you had said, we are... I think we're truly the customer now. Yeah. Where I don't, I, I didn't feel that way um, in the past. At certain times, I didn't feel that way. I feel like we're the customer now. It's like you're treating me like your customer, and I treat my clients as my customers. Well, I appreciate and I like that. that. Yeah, I mean, no, I appreciate you saying that. It, it is a big cornerstone of what we believe in, right? Um, our mission statement's always been to provide the, the best possible environment for agents so they can help their clients and customers make the best housing decisions. Right. And that best environment is how do we support you best as possible. And and really, we sit around a table when we're talking to like our staff of support, and we say the agent is our client. We need to make sure that we're doing the best job possible to support them so they can go out there and help uh, their clients and customers. So uh, I'm glad it's I do good. feel it. Yeah, I, do, I absolutely feel it. I mean, because we've had contact with the IT department, we've had contact with the um, commissions department, we've mm -hmm. had contact with marketing, um, and, and it's just, it's very fast, and I really appreciate that. Well, that, that means a lot to me. Yeah, I appreciate that, and you know, I think the other piece of it is, uh, you know, Jason and I are always available. We try to make ourselves available when people have questions or, or need to talk or whatever, and uh, you'd be surprised, you know, I get questions all the time from people <laughs> on stuff, and you know, that's, that's part of the areas we also love is to make sure we can be supportive. Believe me, I'm not the person who might be able to answer all your questions, <laughs> but at least we can support and get you in the right direction and we're always happy to do that. Well, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. So Dan, if I wanna reach you or somebody wants to get a hold of you and ask you questions, yeah. how do they do that? Uh, email is usually the best, uh, Judy, and certainly, like I said, if I don't know the answer, I will get you in touch with the right person to answer your questions and uh, always happy to help. Excellent. Uh, how about you, if somebody needs to get in touch with you, clients, customers, anybody, how do they reach you? Uh, either my cell phone or my email and I, I make it a policy to answer my emails within usually an hour or two. The same thing goes for my cell phone, unless it's after eight o'clock. Uh, but I do answer all phone calls and I answer all emails. Fantastic. Well, hey, Judy, this has been fantastic. I really appreciate you Thank sitting you. down and taking the time and it's been great to get to know you and ask some, some hard-hitting journalistic <laughs> Thank questions you. too. I appreciate it. Thanks Thank so you. much. Appreciate it.